thyself, the very statement in itself speaks a lot about ourselves. Yes. But what is this true identity that we need to know? And what is this identity that is prepared even before the world was created in Christ Jesus is what is the aim of this program. Today we will continue to discuss more about characters from the scriptures. We have Father Michael Karimatam, who is into scriptures and also teaches at the Mary Martha Seminary. Also Sister Glorista, who is a counselor and a trainer to counselors. Welcome Father. Welcome Sister. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So today we will continue to speak about a very important aspect, especially in today's world, power and authority. How did Jesus deal with this? as a counsellor, as a person who gave an answer. We will have these two very important characters in the New Testament seeking position for power. And let's get it right from the experts. Yes, Father. Okay. Uh, this is a very, very important concept hmm. of power and authority. And there was struggle also among the disciples in the so-called twelve. In fact, this is one thing Jesus found so difficult to bring home to the disciples. If you read the Gospels, um, towards the middle of the ministry, there comes a time when Jesus reveals his true identity to the disciples. So at least the disciples are asked to make a decision about who Jesus is. So it is in the northern part, most part of Galilee at Caesarea Philippi, and there, Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Ma Gospel of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. They narrate the story. As they came to Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked them, "What do you say? What do people say about Son of Man?" Say he. The people say that you are a prophet, Elijah, John the Baptist, etc. Then comes the decisive question: Who do you say that I am? Three answers are given. Mark, in Mark, they said, "You are the Christ." In Luke, it is said, you are the Christ of God. In Matthew, it is said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Hmm. It's the same thing repeated in three ways. Anyhow, without going into the details, exegetical details, uh, what I want to make, uh, bring home, they have come to a realization that Jesus is the Christ, the awaited Messiah. And now what type of Messiah? That is being um, revealed in the second part. That is the journey to Jerusalem. Mark has started that uh, the journey motif and Luke has developed it much and Matthew also has taken it. So what type of Messiah? Hmm. Uh, so that is Mark is presenting in a different way than Matthew. So in the revelations, after this revelation of Jesus the Christ, Jesus reveals the necessity of going to Jerusalem and suffering. Hmm. Three times the passion predictions are made in both on all the three gospels specifically three. And the Gospel of uh, Mark especially, when Jesus makes a prediction of the passion, they do not understand. The mm -hmm. disciples do not understand. Every time he speaks about the, uh, the inventing passion, either they dispute among themselves or they want to know who he is better, etc. So there had been a lack of understanding, all that they understood that Jesus is the Messiah, and now he's going to Jerusalem to take the throne. Mm -hmm. So to his in, uh, in, um, enthronement. And there they have all this expectation of uh, being the important people. Mm -hmm. Now in this context, I take one, uh, one incident. The, the incident is reported in the Gospel of Mark. Mm -hmm. That is after the Passion Prediction. The third time Jesus fortress the passion, and after the third passion prediction, a very detailed description that is chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. And James and, the, and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me for you to do? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, 
we are able. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those who, for whom it has been prepared. Mm -hmm. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are supposed to rule over the, the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. Mm -hmm. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be a slave of all. For the Son of Man also came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. So here we have an example of the concept of authority that is in the, among the disciples and that of Jesus. Now, the disciples know Jesus is going to Jerusalem, and they expect a great revelation of power. And these two disciples, John and James, sons of Zebedee, they are cousins of Jesus by way of mother. Mm -hmm. So they seem to have a, a particular privilege. And in fact, these two were among the core group of the three, Peter, James, and John. They were the most important three, the close. So mm -hmm. these two want to uh, make sure that they get the best places. Mm -hmm. While in the Gospel of Mark, it is the disciples themselves who go. In the Gospel of Matthew, it is their mother. Mm -hmm. So that is very interesting to uh, note the shift. Maybe sister will have also something to say about it. Hmm. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, we hear this. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. So the request is the same. And the rest remain the same, but the introduction has been changed. Hmm. Hmm. So instead of the tw two apostles going, it is their mother. Uh, the mother comes because mother is the relative of, of Jesus' mother. Mm. And so the mother, she is called the sister of Mary. Mm. Sister can be in a larger sense as a cousin, but whatever. So there is a relationship, and Jesus is seen as his nephew, as her nephew, and so she comes to ask for a favor. And the favor is this: they should have the most important position. <laughs> so always the career, careerism, as the present Pope is telling, there is no place for careerism in the, the church. But there was a struggle for careerism right from the time of Jesus, the disciples, who was the first. And even at the Last Supper, there is the dispute, who will be the first among us? Mm. And everyone has a way of saying, I am the first, you are the first. So mm. there is the concept of authority, concept of power that is secular, gentile, worldly, and the concept of power by Jesus. Wow. Mm. So Jesus has an uh, understanding of power that comes from the inner power. Mm. And this power is not to, over, uh, to exercise over the others, not to push down, to lord it over, but to uplift. Beautiful. Mm. So that's how Jesus is going. And then we'll see, so Jesus is somehow telling, you have not understood. So he goes on to say, maybe his sister has something before I, I go further. The power in the sense to wanting to dominate others, wanting to lord it over others, is something of innate in us. Control. That, yeah, it's mm. a controlling the others and I feel that I am. But uh, when we look at Jesus, and the real power is really the inner authority, we call it. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you want and what you want to do. Mm. And that mm. is really the power in the sense of knowing that. When a person is with inner authority, they don't have to dominate anybody else. So knowing who I am, what I am capable of doing, what I want to be there, and that uh, gives me a kind of power in the sense of uh, not to lord it over others, mm. but to bring them into, the, to allow them also to be who they are. Jesus, in the sense, he never changed the persons to be something else. Mm -hmm. He knew all 12 of them were different. Mm -hmm. 
and he dealt with each one the way they were in the sense john was an innocent person and also somebody was searching and he loved him very much but did not give interest the church to him he interested the church to peter peter mm. peter was in the sense that uh, he was very spontaneous always so caring and he had an, such an attraction to the personality of jesus and love and everything but all the same he was so eradicate in the sense of doubting but at the question of one woman he said i don't know him anymore <laughs> so it is that much the rock melted like wax in their sense mm-hmm. yet he knew i am that right mm. he could cry over it he could say that and jesus had told peter i have prayed for you because the temptations are coming and uh, you have to strengthen your brothers mm-hmm. and later we can see peter was really a balancing power in that sense mm-hmm. in the group strengthening others when paul came it was peter who was more accepting of him everybody was doubtful of paul mm-hmm. because he persecuted the um, church but uh, peter said give him he is honest give him a chance mm-hmm. and peter was willing to take that risk and it was to peter that he had the you know, all the you know food is clean and you can accept everybody so this accepting gentiles accepting others into the church was really proven to peter in that sense so that authority was given to peter mm. not to the most loved um, disciple john but at the, what i was saying was that each disciple was different mm. Mm. and jesus dealt with each of them on their way no he was not uh, trying to change their inner personality but uh, bring out the best in them and they all did at the end Mm. so what is inner authority will do is that jesus had the security in the sense he knew who he was and he knew what he had wanted to, he had to do and he was to do and with that he did not he never dominated anybody he was we always see him defending his disciples mm. when he they did something wrong when the people asked about uh, why they were eating the um, uh, wheat on the way or why they ate without washing their hands all the time jesus was defending them mm. never really so the love was there the care was there and all those the understanding mm. only a person with inner authority can share these things so firmly there is a chance that you lose this inner authority for example mm-hmm. the king david mm-hmm. here all the power he had uh, fought and won all the wars and finally he lost everything mm-hmm. because the moment he succumbed to the his passion mm-hmm. with bathsheba the whole thing changes no? right mm. so he committed adultery and committed murder and nathan came and made make him aware of it and you see the second part of david he had not lost his authority out authority but he could no more control his children mm-hmm. so it happens that immediately after this comes the episode that one of his sons amnon somehow violates one of his daughters tamar mm-hmm. by trick and unknowingly david had sent in that tamar with the food to prepare food in uh, amnon's room and she was violated and she cried and everybody knew everybody in the court knew what had happened david could not do anything mm-hmm. he was angry but he did not say anything and then comes the next absalom the brother of tamar he keeps quiet looks for a chance and then he murders amnon why david was angry he could not do anything mm-hmm. see it goes on then absalom um, revolts against him and he had to flee so from the very moment he committed something he knew that he could not should not have done he lost his inner authority he has all right. the mm-hmm. all the weapon he has all the soldiers army but he lost his inner authority so if you compare it with jesus or somebody else 
Jesus, for example, Jesus was threatened by Herod. Mm-hmm. Get out of my territory. So he sends Pharisees to tell, so Herod Antipas wants you to get out of Galilee. And says, go and tell that folks, I'll be here. Mm-hmm. I will be here. It's not he who has to decide what I should do with my father. So today, tomorrow, and the following day, I will be here and doing what? But at the same time, today and tomorrow, I'll be here. On the third day, I am fulfilled. That means Jesus knows that his life is in here, safe in his father's hands. And he is here for a purpose. And the father, as long as he remains faithful to the father, the father will keep him. So yes. it's not here mm-hmm. who decides. So he does, Jesus doesn't have any army. He doesn't have any weapon. But he doesn't succumb to. And he was caught. He was arrested. He was put on trial before Pilate. And Pilate in his whole power, don't you know that I have the power to let you free and to crucify? Jesus loves. Okay, you would have had no power over me unless it had been given to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is not afraid. Right. Because mm-hmm. he has an inner strength. And that inner strength comes from knowing who he is. So it is the same. The disciples should have this inner strength, not because of the position. And what to do with this inner strength? And that's what Jesus is telling the disciples. The one who has power should not dominate the other. Mm. Look, you call me master and teacher. Lord, okay, I am your Lord and master. But if I, who am your Lord and master, have stooped down and washed your feet, mm. you yes. should also do the same. Right. So the authority comes not from overlording it, not from suppressing, but coming, lifting up. Mm. And that is how. So the kneeling down, washing, and he said, unless I wash you. So Jesus' authority somehow makes him uh, empty himself. Mm. So from this self-emptying, they call the kenosis. From this kenosis comes the power. Mm. So he emptied himself. The being, uh, with the, in the being with God, he did not consider it as something to be... Um, uh, stuck to, to be gasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and become a slave and unto death. So he comes down. The authority is in self emptying, that you are at the disposal of God. Mm. He can do whatever. Mm. And then he emptied himself and then God raised him up. Beautiful. And put him all over. I think I can relate to that scripture in John 10 where he says, yeah. Nobody kills me. Yeah. I lay my life down and I take exactly, it back. Exactly. This authority gave God from the Father. So this is, I think, the inner strength. And that inner strength comes from the inner concept, inner awareness, who you are. So what I am is not a gift of you or it's God's gift. And I am given all that is needed for my, my development and the development is for the service. So here comes the concept of servant leadership. Authority is for service. Mm. I think it is the same kind of inner authority that the disciples earned after the Pentecost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Peter, who was so scared, mm-hmm. even at the questioning of a woman, denied Jesus, comes in front of the authorities and says that the Jesus you crucified, God resurrected him. Mm-hmm. And I am to obey him, not you. Super. So mm-hmm. that was really the kind of power the disciples, and they were not afraid of their lives. Mm. When they wanted to save their lives or to get into any position, they could have obeyed, but they didn't want any of that. All they wanted was the freedom and the authority to preach the gospel, preach Jesus Christ. That is where the authority they found. Mm. And there is a beautiful thing in, the, in Kovadis where Peter encountered Jesus on the way. The question mm. asked, Lord, where are you going? I am going to be to Rome to be crucified again. Mm. Then Peter says, it's not you who are going to be crucified, it's I. So mm. Peter goes back mm-hmm. and gets crucified. And they, because others said, okay, you are the leader, you need to be saved, so you go away, and they drove him but Peter came back and said, no, I have to be here. Mm. So, and in a way, I think Jesus had said, Peter, you are rock, on this rock I will build my church. Mm. Mm. True to the word, Vatican stands on top of Peter's tomb. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Just actually where the Peter was Near buried. Near the tomb of Peter. So this way, they, their lives became so fulfilled because they knew what they were called for. All the apostles except John were martyred. Mm. And that did not deter them, you know, the suffering they knew. Jesus had promised them, you will suffer. And the question in the sense, will you receive the baptism? I was baptized. This is baptism of suffering. And they all received it. Even John had more than his share of being fried in the oil. But then he didn't die, so we sent him to Patmos. So I think this has to be also in our daily life. No? The authority, the way you exercise authority, the way you have. See, I think most of our leaders don't have this inner authority. Mm. So you need all the laws and all the, the weapons and all the paraphernalia. Why should the person exhibit with such luxury to be uh, accepted as a leader? So if you don't have the inner authority, you have to somehow put around. Mm. So a person who tries to stop bribery, if he himself is taking bribe, how can you? The same way, so be it the, the empowerment of women or the putting, bringing freedom to the enslaved people, the leaders must first have this inner integrity and authority. And to do that, you be, have to be transparent. Mm -hmm. Do only what we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Power of truth. It's very powerful. That's what Jesus said. No. Mm -hmm. Who among you can, uh, can um, convict me of a sin? Mm -hmm. Who? No, he was an open book. Right. Transparency. Right. Which is not available in today's authority. Mm -hmm. Many places. There is some hidden agenda. Somewhere. Always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you are sure, so become transparent, open. Who can blame me? Who can convict me? True. So that is the strength. And then he is not afraid of anything. He is not afraid of blackmailing. So, so the authority, the inner authority should come from this transparency, integrity. It needs inner authority, it needs integrity. Your own self understand what you are. That's again coming to know yourself. Mm. If you are an image, child of God, put here in a particular position by God, you will have what you need. True. Mm. And okay. don't expect anything more. Don't, don't try to impose. And that has been the experience of all these great people, saints. And I think one of the persons who are living today, showing that kind of integrity is Pope Francis. Yeah. Mm. He is not afraid to deal with anybody, whether it is atheist or Muslim or anybody. It is, he has that... Uh, kind of acceptance and love he can share with them. Look at Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. A half glider, fakir they call him. Mm. But the authority he built, he didn't have any, power, any, any weapon, no soldier, but he had the integrity, the inner authority that the whole country rallied behind him. Beautiful. And finally the mighty empire had to uh, kneel down before him, so to say, no? mm. liberated. So without weapon. Mm. So that is the power type of authority, that is the type of power that Jesus is speaking about, that the Bible is speaking about, that comes from inside. Okay? Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that the kind of power also we see in or Oscar Romero? Yeah. In the sense, saying that uh, whether he knew he mm. will be killed, but that did not deter him for standing for truth and standing for the people. Beautiful. And with his death, Actually, the killing stopped in El Salvador. Poof. Mm. See, in mm. fact, the weaponry, the war, all comes out of fear, out of insecurity. Why do you attack? Because you are afraid you will be attacked. Right, right. The same thing. Are you, uh, or you will lose your privileges, that something which doesn't belong to you. You yeah. are uh, possessing and that will be lost. I think a lot of intimidation will kill this inner authority. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. yeah, people uh -huh. just intimidate, like even in the Psalms. You know, David says, uh, you know, I, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will not fear. Yeah. I will not fear. Not the fear. rod and the staff mm -hmm. is with mm -hmm. the power authority again mm -hmm. speaks about. And so this is, I think also in India, the, the, the regis, all these people, they don't have any political uh, weapon power. The inner strength. Right. Know yourself. Self-realization. Mm. 
so that's what we are uh, that's what the bible is telling that's what jesus is telling you know the so. truth and mm. the truth will make you free and uh, the shortest or the uh, definition about inner authority is know what you want to do and why you are doing it yeah. mm. or what do you want to do and why, why you are doing it yeah. beautiful that is really give you the authority in the sense right. knowing what you have to do and why we're doing, doing it. it okay it's beautiful so that's been a wonderful and insightful episode again we've we've been speaking about how to know ourselves through the personality of christ and through the word of god and we will continue to do so if you have any questions please write to us on know thyself dtv at gmail.com till we meet you in another episode god bless you all thank you father thank you sister